Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to consider on this Christmas day is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Wow, are those words deep and so poetic. I almost hesitate to add anything to them because I, I, I'm certainly not going to be as poetic as John. But because he is so poetic, sometimes we can miss what he has to say, the really deep things that he has to say, because it just sort of flows over us. So I'm going to be a little bit more concrete and take out some of the really deep things that John has to say to us in this short passage. Did you hear at the very front of it what he said in the beginning? Well, that throws us right back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. The first words of the Bible, in the beginning, God. Here he says, in the beginning, the word the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, right there, John distinguishes Jesus from the Father and the Spirit. Because he says he was with God. So Jesus is clearly separate from the Father and the Spirit. John is going to later identify the Word as the Son. And so we know that He's talking about the Son here, and He's not the Father, and He's not the Spirit. He's with them. But then He says, He's not only with God, but He also is God. So He is one with the Father and the Spirit. One God. Three separate persons, but one God. John does a wonderful job helping us to understand the Trinity here. How Jesus is his own person. The Son is his own person in the Trinity. But that they are all one God together. And so Jesus was with God and Jesus was God when he first created the universe. And it was through Jesus that all things were created. For he created the world with the Father and the Son, one God. He was involved in all of creation. And he says that the same word is life. And this life is the light of men, the light of the whole world. What does that mean? Well, Jesus says that anyone who hears my word and believes has passed from death into life. As we hear the word of God, the message of his love and mercy for us, the message of the cross, and believe in him and in his love for us, 
and who he is and what he's done, then we pass from this dark, dead world into the light life of Christ. Now this faith that I'm talking about, this belief, is nothing that you do. It's not by your will at all. Rather, it's by the power of the word that we even believe. For the word is the very power of God unto salvation. The word, as we hear it, is what creates faith in us. So we are passive in our faith bearing. God is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one who creates faith in us. We can't take credit for that. And so what Jesus is explaining here is that he is life and he is light. He essentially kind of turns the lights on so that we see that we are no longer in the darkness because of what he's done on the cross. And yet there are some people who, because they do not hear and believe, they continue to live in the darkness and in death. But for everyone who does hear and does believe, and remember, it's not something that you do, but it's God doing it to you and through you, through his word. Everyone who believes and trusts in him is no longer dead but alive, no longer walking in darkness but walking in the light. And I can't stress enough how important it is that you realize that this is a passive thing for us. We don't actively choose God, but rather we are, we are changed and we, we are woken up by Christ. We have the lights thrown on so that suddenly we see. When I was a child, that's precisely how my mother used to wake me up in the morning. She didn't come and shake me and wake me up. She simply turned on the lights, and all of a sudden I was up. Well, that's what Jesus does for us. That's why he came into the world, to turn on the lights so that we might see God's great love for us, his mercy for us, to see that we are wandering around in the dark until he turns the lights on. Some of you know and still remember what the darkness was like because you you had the lights turned on when you were an adult. Some of us have been walking in his light since we were born, baptized into his word, believed and trusted him. Oh, and there are times we flirted with the darkness. Times when we we have contemplated staying in it. But because of his mercy and grace, he's always drawn us back out. He's not going to let any of his children fall back into darkness. He's always going to reach out for you. Of course, we've said this many times, we can resist him. But we do not choose him. In our will, we can only resist. He reaches out for us. He turns the lights on. He enlightens us and he wakes us up to the reality of his love and mercy. So that when the lights are on, we see the cross of Jesus Christ and how much he loves us that he would take on sin and die for us and remove the guilt from us so that we might be made righteous by his very word and declaration. We are clean. We are holy, not because we have lived righteous lives, but because he has declared it so and we have received it because he's woken us up to the truth and he's turned the lights on jesus is god in the flesh who loved us and died for us so that when we heard the word and believed 
we might become children of God. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>